channel my name is Erica and this is the love project I hope you're excited we are currently in week three of the accountability series hopefully you have saw week one and week two and you're up if you're not please go back to the channel have a look at week one and week two so that you can be in the floor what we've got going on here and now we're in week three so welcome again if you have not please take the time to like comment and subscribe subscribe to the channel again we're in week three so if you have not caught one two you're already behind but the good part is you can subscribe now and then you can be in the uh in the flow for week four and so on and so forth now i'm not sure how long this series is going to be but um in the meantime in the between time we're going to keep this going. And of course, once the series is over, I'll continue to come back with more content. We'll talk about more things. And if you subscribe, then you can tell me different things you want to hear about, different things you want to talk about. Even after the um, series, things I've discussed and talked about, you can ask questions. You can suggest I go deeper into little stories that I happen to tell on here or whatever. And we can keep this thing going. So be a part of the family. Join the squad. Um, join the love project. Subscribe. Ring that bell. Ring that bell. Ring that bell. Yep. Alright, alright. So, so happy to see you all. This is again week three of our accountability series. And today, we're going to be talking about don't miss out. Mm. Now, in this particular week, I got a testimony. I got a testimony because I almost missed out. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, your girl almost missed out. So what do I mean by don't miss out? Well, there's two sides to this coin. Um, originally, when me and my husband met, we met online, as you all may know. Uh, we met on Facebook, we met in this group, and we was talking, and then as we was talking, getting to know one another, I found out that he didn't want all them kids. I mean, for real, he was like, okay, we're not having any kids. If you know me, you know I wasn't having it. Not only did I not have a number of how many kids I wanted, like I was like, let the Lord do what he do. But also, I knew that I wanted kids, period. Like, that is my heart's desire, right? So the fact that he was okay with not having kids... I really wasn't feeling it. I felt like we wasn't on the same page. So, you know, I just told him, I was like, well, sir, you're going to have to get it together. You're going to have to talk to the Lord because if you don't want kids, this ain't going to work. All right. I ain't the one for you. So, you know, he came around and we talked about it and stuff. But I told him something. I said these words. And every time my husband tell a story of how we met, he always tell this particular thing that I told him. I told him, don't miss out on your blessing. I told him that. It was the Holy Ghost, for sure. Because when I tell you those simple words rocked his world, he went prayed, he went talk to the Holy Ghost, and he came back. He was a different man. He was like, you know what? I want kids. And I think that I would be okay with at least three. I said, uh, I could do three. I can do three, you know. So, of course, we ain't start having kids yet. But we're working on that. Amen. Amen. But we haven't started having kids yet. But we agreed to three. And I'm okay with that. So, I say that to say, well, Erica, how did you almost miss out? Hmm. Well... Now to my little testimony. So, during our dating, 
I don't even know if I could take dating. So basically, we talked. We talked. We video chat. We FaceTime and all this for like a year. A whole year from the first day that we started talking. Um, At the end of that year, literally, we started talking December the 14th of 2017. December the 28th of 2018 was the first time that we met. So, my husband finally came down to New Orleans and we met. We had made plans to meet up before to physically see each other and be in one another's presence. However, it just never worked out. And so, literally, we didn't meet each other physically in person until a year later. Um, with that, once he came, it didn't work out. It did not work out. Now, come to find out. There was this huge misunderstanding. My husband actually came with a ring. Yes. He had never physically seen me. He had never held me, hugged me, kissed me, touched me, um, held my hand, none of that. But somehow, he knew that I was the one, all right? So he came with a ring. And, um, however, I didn't know this at the time because he also left with the ring. He never had the opportunity to propose. I never knew he had a ring. I um, ended up telling him that I didn't think it was going to work out. And, you know, it just wasn't what I expected. After this whole year of talking, getting to know one another, telling each other these deep secrets and just, you know, whatever, right? A whole year later, I said... I don't think this is going to work. Again, we found out this was a misunderstanding after the fact. But anywho, this is what happened. So during that time, I was like, well, Lord, you know, me and Marcus didn't work out. That's fine. I, you know, I released him in love. Um, and it didn't work out. He was still a great man. I was still a great woman. We didn't cross any boundaries. Of course, you know, me and my husband and I, we abstained until marriage. So um, there was no sex involved. We remained pure in our walk. Um, so at that point, he was just a brother in Christ. He was able to move on with his life. I was able to move on with mine. And we went our separate ways. So I'm living my best life. So I'm just, you know, dating and because at this point I'm like, oh, my husband's so close. Like, I can feel it so close. Was it close? But was I hearing? Hmm. That's another story for another day. So, anywho, I'm just, you know, dating around and all this stuff. And I will meet these guys, nice guys, good guys, cool guys, whatever. But they wasn't Marcus. They wasn't Marcus. So, I I was very prideful um, in how I felt about us ending. One thing about me, I am cut off queen. Once it's over, it's over. I ain't trying to go back, whatever. We're done, right? Marcus, he didn't, he didn't like approach me in no way, you know, but... He would just remain around. So what he did was, for my birthday, he would send me a text message. He would send me a cash app. Um, different things are happening. You know, we get hurricanes in New Orleans. So if there's a hurricane coming up, a hurricane threat, he will text me. Oh, you know, I heard there's a hurricane coming to the city. I pray that you are safe and, you know, your family is safe. So on and so forth. So just little things, right? He would send me these messages. Um, and it was always so sweet. It was always so sweet. But anywho, we not together. I'm moving on, right? And so, in this process, the Lord started dealing with me. The Lord started dealing with me, and I'm, like, missing Marcus. I would talk to these guys, and they just wasn't measuring up. Now, um, I had been in a relationship before Marcus. I've had many relationships, um, but my last relationship before Marcus ended tragi tragically. Um, I was 
engaged to be married and he was killed in New Orleans and so at that point in my life I had lost the love of my life um and it was devastating it was the worst pain I've ever been through in my life like it was very traumatizing very painful and so honestly I thought that that would be the person I would be measuring men up to um the relationship wasn't godly, honestly, um, but it was good. As I mentioned, there's a difference between good and godly, um, and thankfully I know the difference now, but it was a good relationship. We were best friends. We did everything together. We enjoyed one another company. Like, if you've been around us, you know, you know, like, we had a great time together. We had great communication. I really learned a lot in that relationship, um, and I was really in love. Um, so it took a lot of out of me when that happened. And so again, I thought that will be the person I will be measuring people up to. However, um, I did heal from the relationship and everything prior to meeting Marcus or whatever. And that was one of my prayers that I want to be able to heal fully, to love fully, um, and not have anyone, particularly my husband, um, um, I guess competing with a dead man. That was literally my prayer and God answered that. So then I realized that I am now measuring men up to Marcus. What's this, Lord? All right. So uh, in my previous relationships, like I knew I, I know that I'm a good woman. I knew I was a good woman. So every time we broke up, every time things ended, um, I was like they missed out I knew they missed out um I didn't feel no type of way I think that's why it was always so easy for me to move on because at the end of the day I knew I was a good woman and I knew that they was losing out so when things didn't work out I was like you're lost right and I move on however this is the first time I was feeling like Erica maybe you the one that missed out this time like Marcus is a great man. He love God. He love you. Like literally this man never met you and he showed you that he loved you, right? And again, I never knew about the ring and all of this, but I knew Marcus loved me. I knew it. I knew it. Sure as my name is Erica. And I really feel like God used him to show me his pursuit of me. Like God used Marcus to show me that I can love you and want you and pursue you without you having anything to give me. I had never cooked for him. We had never met physically. I had we had never had sex. Uh we had never kissed. We had never been on a physical date like literally nothing I had given to Marcus. I never gave him money like nothing right but yet he came with a ring because he wanted me he wanted erica he wanted the erica that he talked to that he learned about that he grew to love over the phone over video chat and so that was god like showing me this how i love you no matter what you've been through the good the bad the ugly like I want you I want you as my daughter I love you and I am going to the lens to show you that I want you God pursued me and he used Marcus to show me that in vivid color um, in practical form in the natural um, how he pursued me by using my husband and so when I thought about all that Marcus had to offer, when I looked at my prayer list and Marcus was this person in the flesh, I was like, Erica, you done messed up. And I didn't know how to go back because I couldn't. I wasn't calling him. I wasn't calling him. So then at this point, like the Lord is showing me more and more. Marcus is the one, Marcus is the one. And I was like, Lord, how you gonna do it? Because I ain't calling them. What, what you going to do, Lord? And I, I'm like, oh, but what if God just like, don't do nothing, right? So, but I just kept praying about it. And, you know, even much so, y'all. Even much so. 
I remember being in my room, I was praying and worshiping, and that's when the Lord told me that Marcus was my husband. We wasn't talking. We wasn't talking. The Lord told me God was my husband. And so I kind of was like in this place of like, well, what you gonna do, Lord? You know, because you know I ain't calling them. Now you know your daughter, and she ain't calling. But so much so, how he wants to prove to me that Marcus is my husband, he told me to write my vows. I wrote my vows to Marcus. The same vows. If you want to know the vows, baby, go to my page because it's the first video of our wedding. Our wedding day is posted on my page, The Love Project. Please go check it out. Run the numbers up and then you can hear my vows. But anywho, I wrote my vows that night. I wrote my vows for my husband that I was not talking to at the time. Mm. Would you look at God? Mm. Hey, thank you, Lord. So I wrote my vows. So when it came to the wedding, I told Marcus, I said, oh, I already have my vows written. And um, yeah, because the Lord told me that that was my husband. And I'll tell y'all another time how it all came together. But I just told y'all to let you know that we as women, particularly women, men miss out all the time. And, you know, they, they probably have a few good women they done passed up. But women, we miss out too. And these are the reasons we miss out. One, comparison. A big reason why I almost missed out on my husband is because I was so busy comparing him to what I thought my husband should be. How I thought he should look, what I thought he should have, where I thought he should be from. You couldn't tell me I wasn't marrying the New Orleans man. You couldn't tell me I wasn't marrying the New Orleans man. Baby, when I tell you, I thought we was going to be at the second lines. I thought we was going to be at Mardi Gras. Hey, I thought we was going to be downtown under the, under the bridge. Listen, getting too, getting too New Orleans for y'all. But anyway, this is what I thought. And the Lord was like, no. Because guess what? Don't mean no love God. If you can find a man in the city that won't do <clears throat> all the stuff you're talking about, he love God? Probably not. So get yourself together, girl. But anyway, comparison. Looks. All this stuff. Now, don't get me wrong. My husband is fine. Mm, chocolate stuff. But just having this idea of what I think he should look like. Oh, he should be tall and he should be muscular and he should be this and he should be that. Now, don't get me wrong. If I line my exes up, child, they don't look nothing like. I don't have no bigs and juices. I take them short, tall, light skin, dark skin, whatever. As long as he black. Now, I told y'all that in the last one. But, anywho. So, I didn't really have those picks and chooses. But, age. I thought my husband would be... Around my age, my husband is actually eight years or so older than me. I'm 32 and he's 41. So, you know, I I thought my husband would be around my age and, you know, whatever. So, again, we put those stipulations and then it causes us to miss out. Comparison, we see social media. Social media got us by the neck, ladies. Social media got us by the neck thinking that these men gone. First of all. You know this stuff fake. These men is not this romantic. Most of them is not. Men are just... The women planning all this stuff. And posting it on there like the husband doing it and the man doing it. They ain't doing it. I'm telling you. They ain't doing it. But again, social media got us by the neck with these false expectations of these men. And so when the men don't meet up today, you mess around and find out that you done missed out. Because you got a good man. You got a good man before you and you so busy comparing, right? Comparison, get us every time. The second thing is compromise. Mm. Compromising. So, as I mentioned before, I was talking to this guy. Good guy, we had fun, enjoyed him. However, there was parts of me that I could not be with him. Had I stayed in that relationship, I would have been compromising. Mainly my faith. Mainly my beliefs. Mainly my relationship with God. Right? Compromising. Compromising causes us to miss out. Any person, particularly as a woman, any man 
that draws you away from God, any man that draws you away from your purpose, any man that draws you away from relationship with God, you're compromising. Any man that puts you in a position to repeat old failures, to repeat sin, to repeat your family history, it's a compromise. Don't let compromise be your reason for missing out. Because the things you're believing for, the things you want, the type of man you're believing for, the husband you're believing for is out there. But you can mess around and compromise, get with a counterfeit, and you're going to miss out. Don't let it be you. Right? Number three, committing to someone who is not committed to you. Ladies, you think social media got you by the neck. Baby, these situationships got you upside down by the legs. <laughs> Baby, these situationship is, they, they doing us dirty. Don't fall for it. Don't assume you with somebody that haven't asked you to be with them. Don't assume because y'all kicking it y'all together. Don't assume because he posts you on his social media and the story, which probably is private, that y'all together. Don't assume because you met his sister and you met his boys or you met his, even his mama, that y'all together. If you haven't made it exclusive, if you haven't agreed that you're in a relationship, if you have not committed to one another, you're in a situationship. Don't commit to someone who has not committed to you. That is how you miss out. Because while you over there playing house and this and that with him, that good man, you look taken. As my bishop say, you got the out of order sign on you. You got the out of order sign on you. Because how, how I know you're available? It's like having a parking spot. If you pull a little regular car in a parking spot, how the Beamer and the Bentley, how the Hummer, and the jag gonna pull in. I want you a little hoop that's sitting there. Hmm. Baby, get out this pocket spot, please. I'm available. Okay? And thank you. So, make that clear. Make that clear. Don't miss out. Last but not least. The biggest way we miss out. <clears throat> and it's the way I almost missed out. Not seeking God on our me. Now, I met this awesome man. Thankfully, the Lord brought it around, back around. But I met this awesome man. However, I was not seeking God. Like, I just was kind of going through the motion. Oh, I like him. We have great conversation, all these things. Now, I had seen God previously praying for me, believing God for somebody, and so on and so forth. But once I, literally, like, once you meet a person, you should bring it to God. Lord, show me who this person is. Lord, you know, should I date them? Should, you know, we actually commit to one another? Should we take it further? So on and so forth. I was blinded. Um, I was blinded. Um, even by the excitement of a new relationship and just, you know, coming out of, again, trauma, um, a tragic loss, and then even believing that I can love again, um, which seemed like so quickly. Um, it wasn't quick, obviously, but, you know, you feel like that when you're going through grief and stuff. So, I just was blinded at the time. But, thankfully, again, it came back around in the Lord, in, in His perfect time, and brought us together. And now, I am with my person, but, please see God. If you really believe into marry, marriage is forever, and it should be forever. So you can save yourself so much trouble by knowing you chose the right person, the right person chose you. So I suggest you seek God. And um, if you do so, you won't miss out. So with that, I ain't trying to keep y'all. That was, that was all I got for you. I told you my testimonies and I told you how we miss out. Don't be like me. I ain't officially missed out. But I was so close. And don't be like so, uh, so many other women. We miss out every day. We miss out on good men because we doing what we want to do. We out here going with the flow. Ain't nobody got time for that. So, ladies, don't miss out. If you like this video, 
come back next week. Week four. We back and we back and we rolling, baby. And of course, like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see y'all next time. Love ya.